morning, Dallas. We have a warm spring day in store. Clouds clearing by new time. It's 74 degrees at 6 o'clock. Quick huddle up. Just real fast. One, two, three. Each spring and fall, before sunrise, a group of volunteers flocks to a Dallas parking lot. Just be really careful as we're crossing the roads. We'll divide the route in half, and then we'll meet in the center. They're here to survey downtown buildings. If we find any stunbirds, we've got some canisters. But their interest is birds. Sound good? OK, let's do it. It'll be just a lot of walking for a while. It's not. <laughs> These volunteers are gathering valuable data about the impacts of city lights and buildings on migrating birds. Okay, we've got a blue jay chick. Uh, thankfully, this isn't a collision issue. That, that's just a little fledgling that's come out of the nest. And I saw its mom right back here, so uh, we'll let it be and she'll keep feeding it there on the ground. We're headed out on a bird collision survey through downtown Dallas, looking to see if we find any birds that have hit buildings that have been drawn down by artificial light. We're gonna document those birds and put them into a database for science. This is an important conservation issue. We lose up to one billion birds a year in the United States alone, just from collisions. So we have to take action on it. Many bird species are in dramatic decline because of loss of habitat and other issues. And so to take action on this issue is really important to save these birds. Okay. So it's great to have a good crew out here every morning that's trying to help out, get the city darker and then document the collisions that we're finding so we know what's going on out there and we can do something about it. A lot of times the strike zone will have planters, you know. It's difficult to find a bird in something like this, but if they're brightly colored, you know, sometimes we can see them. So we're two buildings down and zero collisions so far that we've documented. It's the only bird walk where you don't want to find any birds. We get a lot of banana peels, door stops, dog poo. You, you, with eyes like this, we can make anything into a bird. The other day, my youngest son looks down, there was a hummingbird laying at the bottom of the fence. He said, what about this one? <laughs> Sometimes kids uh, have the best yeah. eyes. <laughs> A lot of people don't realize that there are birds migrating at night. It's a big migration zone for birds passing both in the spring and the fall. If you think about before all these lights, you have birds probably navigating by the constellations and the moon. Birds at night just can't help themselves but come down into the city and then they get confused by all the glass. They see these trees reflected in the buildings, especially mirrored glass, and fly into the glass thinking that they're landing in a tree. And unfortunately, they're doing it 35 oh. miles an hour, so it's, it's not yeah. a, a gentle strike usually. Yeah, what do you think? So it looks like we have a Nashville warbler. We have the yellow on the breast, and then um, its size gives it away. That's a warbler, and then we have an olive green on the back wings and on its back. And so Afonso and I are going to bag it. At least we're finding and documenting the collision, and we're going to be able to use that data to help make additional change in the city and prevent collisions. On to look for more. It may seem like it's just one bird, but it all adds up. So this is a brown thrasher, one of the larger birds that we find aside from the waterfowl. This one's been here a little bit longer. It's an area we don't always come down to search along the skywalk. If you think about the loss of one bird, you've lost that bird, and then every bird it would have produced that year and the following year and its offspring. Oh, there's another. Older bird, but it looks like maybe a blue grosbeak. Yeah. Blue grosbeak. Some of the songbirds might have five nests here and six young in each nest, and that adds up to like 340 some birds just from the loss of that one bird. It's pretty sad in the moment. Um, you just kind of have to tell yourself that 
you're doing this to collect data and you know get these buildings to turn off their lights at night and prevent more collisions from happening. Anything in the 10 building study, the data goes to Cornell, but all of the birds go to A&M. So they're all getting used instead of discarded. Mm -hmm. okay. So once those legs are out and you have it peeled down just a little bit, mm -hmm. you can go ahead and do that. We're in the Biodiversity Research and Teaching Collection. Uh, we have collections of birds, mammals, reptiles and amphibians, and fishes. We've got approaching 1.2 million specimens collectively. Specifically to birds, we're about to hit 30,000 specimens. I would say that the bulk of our material uh, comes in from uh, salvage programs. When specimens arrive here from the Lights Out program, they're frozen with their data, and we put them into baskets according to where they came from and kind of prioritize processing them into specimens for our collection. Most recently with, this, uh, with the Lights Out program, we've started to get hundreds and hundreds of birds after each migratory period. So a couple hundred in the fall and a couple hundred in the spring. These are warbler specimens. Most of them came from a major fallout event in 2017 in Galveston. And uh, 400 or so hit a building in the middle of the night because the building's lights were on. That kind of started our awareness program in Texas. Um, it made national news. From there, uh, kind of our volunteer efforts across the state started uh, with awareness of lights off at night, you know, when migration is happening specifically. These are 12 most common um, window strike species that we get from Lights Out, and it spans more than just the songbirds. I am working on a yellow-breasted chat. It's a salvage bird that hit a building in Dallas. When the birds come here, we can then use them for all sorts of different research projects. People will uh, often ask for loans of tissue material to do genetic research. We can pull from here for them to do DNA analysis on those specimens. Some people are interested in disease ecology and they've asked for tissues to look at zoonotic diseases. We teach labs here in the collections, so it's not just research, it's, it's also teaching and trying to develop that next generation of ecologists and conservation biologists. And that's one of the big lights out birds. We try to maximize each specimen we, we want to make sure that they're used. Wow, that's a fresh one. Where was he? This one was across the street over here, the big glass there by that building. An oven bird? You're in the warbler family? Large yeah. warbler. The species is just known to strike glass a lot. Somebody came up with the term super collider. We're trying to help prevent these kind of collisions. And hopefully with the data that we find here, with the birds that we're able to find, we're able to bring more awareness. It's worth it, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, everybody who's here loves wildlife, and we're all doing this for a good cause, to be able to help these birds make it safely home. Today we're gonna break 200 birds so far this season. It just really breaks my heart, makes me sad. We can do better. It's becoming a bigger and bigger topic. More people are starting to pay attention to it, try to figure out what they can do to change glass and also change lighting. Texas is a globally important bird area, so when we take lights out action here, it has an exponential effect across the country. It's important to take action at home as well, and our communities really rallied around this to help save birds. As you can see, it's been, unfortunately, a busy season. Uh, freezer is pretty full. Five, six, seven deceased birds and one stunned bird, which we'll take and release. We get quite a few each season that are stunned or injured that we can release back into the wild. The best part is being able to save what birds we can. It's very rewarding when you can just remove them away from the glass and let them go off on their own and do their thing again.